Now think about it. How many pairs of pants do you have, or shirts, or shoes? Metro Vancouver residents threw away 44 million pounds of clothing last year. That is a lot of waste. Well, with us here today are Emily Smith and Stephanie Ostler, and they teach students how to create a more sustainable textiles industry. And this is all a collaboration between SFU and Emily Carr. Hello, you two. Welcome. Hello. Hi. Thank you. So tell me more about the course, Emily. Um, so this course is really about combining uh, business students and design students to reimagine what's possible for Vancouver and BC's textile industry. Okay, so how, how have the classes been going so far? Oh, incredible. It's amazing to see so much demand, so much curiosity, and so much enthusiasm in these students. Why do you think the demand is so high right now? I think this is a topic that's been around for, well, at least over a decade as far as I'm concerned. And I think it's been largely relegated to sort of the fashion schools to deal with, but um, they've already got their hands full. And we've been having this conversation on social media and in our lives, but we haven't really touched on it so much in, um, I guess, more of a philosophical context between different departments. I see. So what kind of students are, are attracted to this course? It's a wide range. Um, so there's everything from environmental science students. There are design students, so people um, who are like actually sewing their own clothing, but then but kind of newer to it, have never really know, known about that before. Um, there's also marketing students. Um, yeah. Well, everybody wants to do good things for the future of the earth right now. It's kind of the, in style, isn't it? <laughs> when you think about it, this is the new trend. What have you brought in today? These, these look yeah. intriguing. Yeah, so uh, one, uh, these are fish leather shoes uh, made locally um, by a woman, uh, Tasha Nathanson, of Seven Leagues. And so she's really building this. These are prototypes, and she's working on developing sustainable fish leather shoes. No, seriously, this is a fish skin. <laughs> this was a fish skin, and you just cure it? I mean, it... it Veggie tan. It feels like leather. It smells. So it yeah. smells like leather completely. There's no hint of fish except these gorgeous, scaly mm -hmm. kind of texture on it as well. There's so much you could do with this, I think. Exactly. Yeah, and it's a byproduct from the uh, fishery industry well, as well. Of course. Right? So. Yeah, they're, they're just canning the fish. They don't need the skin anymore. Exactly. So you can say, why not reuse that? <laughs> and what about this? What did you bring in here? Um, so this is a uh, blanket made with an antique shuttle loom. Um, and so this is a, a mill that's on the Sunshine Coast. And what's really exciting about this mill is that it actually produces yardage. And all of the cotton is organic cotton sourced from uh, North Carolina. It, is, it feels so, so soft mm -hmm. and lovely. Okay, so North American cotton. That's, yep. I guess that's as, as close as you can get to sustainable uh, locally. Yeah, cause... and dry agriculture as well. So they use a lot less water. Okay, that is beautiful. And what have you got over here, Stephanie? <laughs> well, this is knit from mostly my Angora rabbit, which is my household pet. Her name okay. is Snowball. The pet, the pet is okay. The pet is no okay. No harm was done no, to the pet in the lazy. making of this. She just lies around the house most of the time. Uh, but we just shear her and we spin her hair into fiber. And it's I want people to sort of rethink about what we do have uh, available to us. We have dogs and cats. Not that I think everybody needs to be wearing dog hair sweaters, but just to rethink about what we already have. Wow. Now, when I talked about this being soft, yeah, this, this is ultra soft. It and doesn't get more local than this. This came from It's a work in progress. Work You're working progress. on it right now. Yeah, 15 minutes away from here. Okay, so how many times would you have to shear your rabbit to get that much uh, this is about of the rabbit two hair? shearings, but really? I'm, I'm really um, hands off with her. She's a house pet, so she doesn't get manhandled too much. <laughs> that yeah. is gorgeous. Okay, and what about this? This is an intriguing this piece. Cool. So this is uh, wool that's a byproduct of also the agriculture industry, um, and this would otherwise be composted. I met a sheep shearer in my neighborhood who donated a whole bunch of fleece, and at Emily Carr, uh, we took this fleece, mm -hmm. so usually to process fleece you have to spin it and cart it and it takes a while okay but at Emily Carr we have this machine with a whole bunch of needles in it and it just wow. like basically felts it really fast so oh. this is like what we call in design a rapid prototype of uh it's a material what would right? you use this for is this this would be a throw rug for example could that be a could throw be rug you can cut it it's a fabric now right I'd so it into a coat you could, could make, a coat. Coat. Yeah, make a coat, coat. lined yeah. yeah, it is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> okay, let's let's talk about sustainability, but let's also talk about fashion trend. I mean, mm -hmm. just when when we talk about fashion, you can't help but thinking about what's in today. So, mm -hmm. where does the sustainable fashion and sustainable things fit into the picture? Yeah, it really comes in in terms of um, local. 
right? If we can cut down the amount of shipping that's happening and the amount of manufacturing that's happening in this, you know, we have a lot of sheep that are, that are raised in New Zealand. They're then being, uh, their fibers are being sewn in China and then being sold in North America, right? And so that's a lot of shipping that's happening. And so if we can localize our fibers more and just be more in touch with our fibers and really know where they're coming from, um, we can really uh, be more connected to our textiles and less likely to want to throw them away. Okay, so well. let's just talk about reading labels when we do go shopping. Uh, one of the things we look at is what's it made of? Mm -hmm. what, are the, what are the fabrics? What's, mm -hmm. what's the, the makeup? But another important thing is, is the price for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but think, like if you're working yeah. on this rabbit mm -hmm. fur. <laughs> oh, it's going to be expensive. But we're talking about volume right now. So they're working with volume overseas and um, very, very low wages and in dangerous environments. So if we reprice things uh, according to what they really should be priced at, we'd start looking at maybe the Angora might not be a comparable price, but more of our local industries like our local wools would be a comparable price or recycled, upcycled. The fish skin's a great option. What's it going to take to really turn people's minds around, though, in the terms that we don't need this fast fashion in our lives? Yeah, I think a big part of it is that revaluing piece yeah. about, like, sort of thinking about, okay, if you're paying $10 for a T-shirt, who, what's the true cost of that, yeah. right? And who, like, who made that garment, right? So I think it's, it's the revaluing and then also um, this disposable throwaway culture we have. I think a good way to start revaluing on your own is start making something because we all have that experience with food. Once we start cooking on our own, we start really valuing quality ingredients. And the same goes for fashion. So if you just pick up some knitting needles or you start to sew, you start revaluing your clothing really quickly. You want to give me a quick lesson? <laughs> it might take a little while. I think, no, it's going to take a long yeah. while if you're going to be teaching I'm me. I'm a good teacher. Pick it up. Try it for yourselves. Stephanie, Emily, thank you so much thank for you. coming in. Thank you. Awesome.